today's video, we're going to talk about a very sneaky competitor PPC strategy where you could literally get your prospects of your competitors the very warmest prospects that they have searching on Google to come directly into your company instead. And I call it sneaky because essentially what's happening is basically your, your competitors' prospects are thinking they're contacting them and they're contacting you without actually deliberately trying to trick them. Um, they are being a little bit lazy. They're not thinking clearly. They, they're coming to your, basically your website instead. You're not misrepresenting anything. You're just at the right place at the right time. Now, this isn't an actual strategy where you're just like, you know, when people type in your competitor's name in Google, you're going to have your ad show up there. That's a different type of competitor strategy. And if you're interested in that as well, after you watch this video, I cover that in detail, how to absolutely just dominate that in terms of every single competitor that you have, you write a reason why you're better that, than that competitor and then you have that on your ad and then show up you know, when somebody types in your competitor's name. That's a great strategy all on its own. But this is something entirely different. This is somebody who doesn't even know your competitor's name but they're trying to find the competitor via Google and then you're gonna be there at that exact time to facilitate that consumer's need, we'll just say, to where they were initially looking for your competitor, but now they're suddenly now gonna do business with you because you were there at the right place at the right time. So I'm gonna explain how that strategy works and what you can kind of expect from it in general in terms of leads, cost per lead, and stuff like that. So anyway, this is a strategy that is, you know, definitely gray area, but it definitely works. Uh, you may not like to get somebody who was searching for your competitor and then, you know, come into you, uh, dealing business with you, doing business with you, sorry. But if you do and you want leads for like $5 each when you might have been paying $50 each for leads and you want more leads, this will probably get you leads. It doesn't work in every single market, but close enough. So anyway, what is this? What this is about is getting people who are looking for your competitors locally or, you know, basically um, geographically, we'll just say, uh, by mentioning, you know, some geographic term or word, uh, but it, because they don't know the name of that competitor. So this could be people looking for your competitor by the building that they're in, looking for that competitor by the street that they're on, looking for that competitor by the town that they're in, the city they're in, the neighborhood they're in, and others. So this is just a basic list that I would cover when we're doing this for campaigns that we're gonna run at our agency, at our PPC agency. So anyway, with that said, lots of times people do not remember your competitor's business name. And people don't even remember your business name either as well. That's why you run good brand campaigns where you actually bid on your brand name on Google, even if you don't think that you should, unless you, when you type in your brand name and all possible variants of your brand name, you don't rank number one and there's zero ads there at the top of Google. You need to run a brand campaign because people will steal your traffic away. The stuff that you spend all this time and money to advertise to the mark, you know, general market, you get somebody willing to buy from you on payday they go to type in your brand name and then somebody has an ad there, your competitor has a damn ad there that says how they're offering a special this week and now they got them. You lost that sale, the ad that you did before that you spent big money to get that person convinced initially, all wasted and it makes your other advertising to get people in initially interested in your product or service that you know less productive by a great margin because the bottom of the funnel is very inefficient. So, and people don't remember how to basically type in your brand name. They type in misspellings, they don't know the word, they don't remember the word. Given that 80% of the people who are gonna buy from you aren't gonna buy today or the first time they visit your website because they have to get paid, they have to talk to their wife, you know, if they think about it, they have to do more research, whatever. When they eventually go to buy, they don't remember your brand name unless it's a very memorable brand name they'll probably forget and then they won't know it and they'll misspell it. You want your brand name, or your brand ad, if you will, to show up on Google so you don't miss those sales. 
running brand ads is about all the people misspelling your brand, then just making sure your competitors don't even show up above you, even though that you do it for that reason as well. But going further than that, people are actually going to, sorry, <clears throat> people are going to not even remember your brand name at all. They're not just gonna not misspell it. They're actually not gonna remember at all how to type it in. They'll remember potentially where you're located or some other uh, aspect of your business um, and then type that in. So <clears throat> what this actually might look like is they might type in, um, you know, life insurance agency on J Street. If you're on J Street, they might type that in and you use that to find you through Google. Help, knowing that Google's very smart now, they can help you find, they'll, they'll, they'll help you find the business, your business that way. And so with that kind of thing, as you do your brand campaigns, as I was mentioning that, you may actually want to not just focus on showing up your brand name and common misspellings of your brand name, which I always include in my brand campaigns, but also other things like I'm mentioning here so that you show up first and it's gonna help people be able to find you because when they're looking to buy today, they have that money in their hand, it's hot, and they can't find you, you're just throwing sales away. Not only that, but if somebody does this to you, you know, you're gonna lose sales to them because they're gonna find them easier than they find you. And half the time when they type in a question to Google, they don't even read the ad. They just type in, you know, life insurance agency on Dre, uh, J Street. If there's a life insurance ad that says life insurance on the top of Google, they're half, you know, asleep when they're searching. They're on autopilot when they're searching. They People use Google like you think when you're tying your shoe. You don't think about tying your shoe, it's all on autopilot. So they'll click on the first ad thinking that it's you and it's a life insurance agency. If that landing page looks like, you know, they don't remember for sure what your website looked like, but if it seems okay, they're just gonna go with that company, now you've lost them. To flip you know, uh, this around, when somebody goes to search for your competitors and they can't remember exactly what the brand name is, but they're ready to buy today, you can actually show up in those exact spots and get leads for you know a couple bucks each because nobody's usually thinking to advertise here. People, when you bid on your competitors' brand terms on Google to have your ad show up there, those ads are still fairly expensive because Google knows the value of those. Google's algorithm doesn't know the value of insurance you know, agency on J Street as much. So the leads are much, much cheaper. And your competitors, you know, other competitors that are trying to show up on that competitor's brand's search results will also be competing with you if you want to show up under your, you know, competitor's uh, brand name and the search results thereof. Uh, bidding, because Google Ads is a bidding system. It's an auction system. It's going to bring up a cost to get somebody when searching for your competitor to come to your site versus somebody else that's trying to do it to that same competitor. Uh, when they're searching and they don't know the name of the competitor, there's not anybody else to compete with. You're the only person looking to advertise when somebody's searching for something like sales training firm, J building. That's why your lead cost is so gonna be so damn cheap. So as far as a way to steal leads from your competitor on Google search, i.e. what you know we would still call a competitor campaign, this is as good as it gets. You may not have quite the search volume, but the cost per leads 10 times cheaper than what it would be going after somebody searching for that competitor's name by itself. So anyway, lots of times people don't remember your competitor's business names, therefore they'll, they will search for the business type or description instead and the name of some identifier that they can link to that business to f actually find it. Three different examples here. They can search like sales training firm J building if they don't know the name of the company, but they know it's a sales training company in a certain high rise building. They could search and uh, if we're not talking about like a B2B uh, type service, business to consumer, karate on Brickle app. If they know what they're searching for, the name, oh, what's that karate? I know it's on Brickle app, karate on Brickle app. They'll look for the company. That's an opportunity to get somebody, if you're in the karate business, to come to your uh, studio. They could also do, or search for, life insurance, uh, life settlement company in Union Junction. Life settlement is where you sell your life insurance policy to a company to get the cash value of the life insurance before you die, if you don't know what that is. But life 
settlement company in Union Junction. So, in other words, they don't know, uh, you know, and this applies for businesses where there's not as many businesses out there locally. If you're looking for a life settlement company, there's probably, you know, 100 life settlement companies sprinkled throughout the U.S. There's probably only one in each city. So therefore, somebody knows if they just type in life insurance, life settlement company in city name, they're probably going to have, Google is going to be able to help them find what they need. And then if you have the ad on the top of Google saying life settlement company Union Junction, not implying that you're in Union Junction, just saying Union Junction, implying that you serve people from Union Junction, you've now got captured that lead. Uh, of course, the karate on Brickle Ave, that's people searching at the street level, and then sales training firm on uh, sales training firm J Building is people looking at the bill even at the building level. So, and again, this you could go city level, town level, neighborhood level, depending on uh, what you want to do. Personally, I'm going to try all of the above because this is going to bring leads so cheap, reach so ridiculous, cheaper than any other lead source that you're going to get from Google search that you want to extend this as far as you can go with it. Okay? So, anyway, that's why I mentioned this is a gray strategy because somebody's technically looking for that competitor. They're indicating that they want to go with that competitor, but you're basically if you will, want it, tricking the user into thinking they found that competitor and they really found you. Um, for me, it's still a legal, legit strategy. It, yes, it's a little bit uh, skeezy, if you will, but you're not actually saying you're that competitor. You're just there at the right time at the right place. And if you if they search for, like I said, uh, life, life Settlement Company in Union Junction, and you say Life Settlement Company Union Junction, you're not saying you're in Union Junction, you're just saying if you're looking for results or, or, or services in Union Junction, we serve you. It's no different than saying if you're a plumbing company and you have a plumbing ad uh, that says like, you know, plumbing services Long Beach when you serve all of LA, uh, you're not actually in Long Beach, you're just saying plumbing services Long Beach to make sure the person that's in Long Beach know that you serve them. That's really no different than this. So therefore, I don't see this as a uh, irreputable, irreputable type of strategy. You can obviously do what you want if you don't want the free leads enough to take them. Now, but there are some other considerations here, right? Uh, I know what you're saying, Corey, but what if they actually ask, you know, um, why are you not located on, you know, Brickell Ave or in Union Junction anymore? And the answer to that question could simply be, as I've seen other people do that I've worked with, they could say, we are in, you know, Chicago now. Um, some other people will just try to flip the lead. They'll say, you know, we're, we're in Chicago. We're, we, you know, we're not actually in Union Junction, but I'll, let me tell you why you don't want to do business with that other company. And you could go that route with it. For me, that's not the route you want to go because it's going to sound you're like you're really desperate and for a lot of that desperation is, is stinky and nobody wants it to work with desperate people. So I'm going to say we are in Chicago now, not implying that we were in Union Junction and we moved to Chicago. We're just saying we're in Chicago now. You were always in Chicago. <laughs> you know, you, you, it, so it's, it is lying through admission. But uh, technically, if you want to say that, but, you know, respectively, you've not actually deliberately, um, you know, committed any fraud or anything there. That, I mean, as far as business goes, as far as, as long as you're, it's legal, you know, we cover it on this channel. We'll just leave it at that. It's not illegal to say we're in Chicago, you're stating a fact, okay? Then they could say, oh, okay. Then you continue on and you process that person's order and as, as far as I'm concerned as well, if you're tricking them into getting something that's actually legitimately better, who cares how you got them as a client? Of course, you don't want to literally lie, but if you don't, if it's if it just, you know, you're, it, you're kind of making it hard to, for that person to, to get what they initially came for, but, and then they got something that's better, you know, the two even out. So legitimately, if you have something that's better, you can beat that other person. They're looking for that person geographically. They can't remember the exact brand name. You want to actually capitalize on those opportunities. As far as the results go, 
like I mentioned, you know, and touched on before, when we're doing this, the lead cost will be between like a dollar and ten dollars. We've done this several times now. There's obviously for that cost, and for some people, you may be getting leads for ten bucks already, so it may not be that incredible. But if you're paying, I'll we'll just put it into perspective. If you're paying ten bucks a lead now, it'll be a dollar a lead once you incorporate the strategy. It's literally about ten times less cost per lead than it would be otherwise. Of course. Um, you know, life settlement company as a keyword by itself is expensive. So it's not going to be that cheap per click. You're not going to get like a, you know, 10 cents per click because nobody's advertising on life settlement company and union junction yet. But the conversion rate's super, super, super high. So even though the cost per click is similar to what you're paying for a click uh, elsewhere uh, on your, you know, other, you know, prospecting campaigns, if you will, uh, the conversion rate will be 30% or whatever, or 50% to the point where that lead can actually end up being 10 bucks or whatnot. So, or if you're paying 100 bucks a lead, you know, of course it'll be 10 bucks. Or if you're paying 200 a lead, it can be 20 bucks. That that's the kind of general, that's the ratio generally what we're kind of seeing. And so, yeah, if somebody searches for life settlement company in Union Junction, and you say life insurance. Uh, life settlement company Union Junction, your conversion rates are probably going to be about 30% on that lead who clicks through that ad because you gave them presumably right what they what they wanted. And in, in addition to that, actually, your click through rate on your ad is going to be like 20%. And with a 20% click through rate and a 30% conversion rate on the click to lead, the quality score is going to be a 10 out of 10. Which, if you know anything about that, if you get a 10 quality score. Everybody starts out at, at, at a seven quality score. If you bring you know, a quality score from a seven to a 10 because the click-through rate and the conversion rate is off the chart like that, then instead of paying 10 bucks a click, if maybe that's what you were paying, you'll be paying six bucks a click or something like that. So um, that's also where the 10x reduction in the cost per lead is gonna come from having used this strategy for yourself. So it's not just the increase in conversion rate you're gonna get, you're gonna get almost half the cost per click that you were paying before. And of course, if you're not getting a seven, um, most people aren't even, that I look at, you know, I look at a lot of different accounts here, most people aren't even getting a seven quality score. The average quality score in all their keywords is like a six or a five, if you average them all out. So instead of paying 10 bucks a click before, now you're paying five or four dollars a click. So you're literally paying half of the cost per click and your conversion rates five times as high. So that's where your 10x reduction in cost per click comes from using this strategy to collect leads, siphon leads away from your competitors who were probably most of these people that got that are searching this way, they've already decided because they've been marketed to you know aggressively over the last month or so, or they got a referral and they just can't remember the business name, but they remember other aspects of the conversation they had with their friend that referred that business to them. And you're just cherry picking, cherry picking them at the very last second. Those leads are going to come in. Not only are you going to get a cheap cost per lead, it's 10 times less than what your average cost per lead is going to be. You're also going to get a higher lead close rate. So if your close rate on top of all of this, if your lead close rate is you know, 20% right now, you can expect the lead close rate on something like this to be like one and two to one and three. It'll at least be double, if not triple, the lead close rate. Uh, that is the caveat that we're talking about a business where the person does not have to drive to you. Obviously, if most people are searching this way and they're looking for local, uh, you know, searching with the local context, uh, sales training firm, J Building, Karate on Brickle Ave. Most of the people searching this way, you may think, well, they're all trying to come in and drive in. They're not. For business services anymore, almost nobody comes into the office anymore. They like the idea of dealing with somebody locally a lot of times in case something goes wrong or you know the company tries to rip them off. They want to come in and choke somebody or beat the shit out of them but they don't really want to come in. If everything goes fine, they don't want to drive 20 minutes across town and then drive 20 minutes back to you know basically what they could get done on the phone. And other people that run insurance companies and so forth will tell you that. They just don't come in. They don't care to come in anymore. Maybe if you're in a rare, very small town 
and you're getting you know the basics of the basics like car insurance or something that's two streets down they'll come in but if it's all across town you know they're not going to come in so with that said they're not going to come in very few people are going to ask why you're not located in xyz anymore because they're, they didn't intend to come in in the first place so you're not going to have any of that your close rates on leads therefore can be two to three times what other leads you have that you're generating will come in at because there's not you're not going to be tripping over any uh you know we're not located here but we're located here and you know why is that and having to go through that whole spiel if you actually are in a situation like with this second example that i gave you karate on brickle app if you're doing a karate place where they have to drive in then your closing rates on leads so to say will actually not be the best but the fact that that person was already ready to buy it wasn't like karate you know um i don't forget you know don't really know what they refer to them you know karate studios i hope i got that right uh karate studios in chicago when they make that search they don't even know if they're going to come in and do that yet they're just playing with the idea many of them anyway some of them are serious many are not and they're certainly not going to be coming in that day and between the time, you know, the, when people initially search, they're not generally looking to buy today. Like I said, 80% generally aren't ready to buy on the first, you know, click to your website. So, and the time between the time that they are going to be ready to buy and the time that they're initially doing their research on a search like Karate Studios in Chicago, they probably can get, for, you know, they'll forget, get distracted, blow the money on something else. Uh, you know, the, the, the conversion rate, from lead to sale on those aren't the best even for something that's a low risk low cost proposition as you know signing up for karate even that is sort of a big commitment but in general comparing somebody searching for karate studio in chicago and karate you know studio on brickle ab there's really no comparison in terms of the lead quality you're going to get there so even though on half or more of the occasions they're going to wonder why you're not, you, what I would recommend, by the way, you do, you take them through the, you know, at, answer all their questions. And then when they come in, of course, you, you're before, you know, you really get them all the way through technically to, you know, the conversation, you explain that we, we are actually, just to let you know, we're actually on this other uh, street. And, um, you know, if it's too far, you may not get them, of course, uh, which is why you may not want to do this to people that are outside, the, you know, you know, geographically too far from where you're at because you're just not going to be able to close down those leads that, you know, technically would have to compromise with you and drive another five times the distance. But uh, you just tell them, you know, we're on, a, we're not, act, just to let you know, we're not on Brickle Ave, we're actually on J Ave. And uh, so, it, you know, just, is that, just making sure that was fine with you. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Because once you've already talked to them for five minutes, you've got enough time to build enough rapport up with them. They aren't going to care that they had to drive, you know, this, you know, this basically the same distance to this studio versus this studio. They built a rapport with the user. You were friendly. You helped them answer all their questions. You'll close them about the same rate. So whereas you will actually get some people that are like, no, I, I, you know, I got the referral for this place that's on this place, uh, this at this location. I don't want to do business with you, and um, you're not going to get the closing rate from that the seriousness of the lead it'll balance out to where your close rate will be should be better than the leads you're already getting still but not quite as good as to have it the close rate be two or three times as good as if you're running a business that the person never really has to come to you and never and don't actually have that hurdle of explaining we're not actually on brickle app or on jav and having to go through that whole spiel with them specifically so um if people ask questions about the location, you can again say, we're actually in XYZ now, or just say, we're not actually in Brick, at, on Brickle, uh, we're on JF, but let me tell you why you should come here. Uh, for the most part, they just won't ask unless they have to drive to you. So if you're not a place where most 90, even 95% of people don't actually come into your office, don't even worry about this strategy because of course, it's never going to come in a conversation anyway. And you never have to bring it up to them in any way because you know that they're not going to come in. So what's the point? Uh, if they did have to come in, 
you've already been doing business with them at that point in time, obviously, even though, again, this is a little gray area, they can find out then, and if you've already been doing business with somebody and you liked it, I don't care if I realize this is a different business I, that I was being referred to before, they're not gonna just drop you anyway, right? So anyway, that's the strategy in a nutshell. Make a list of all your competitors, of course, that if your people have to come to you that are within your geographic territory, or in general, it could be nationwide, people make a list of all your competitors, and then bid on all the terms where they're looking for the building that they're in, the street that they're on, the city, town, or neighborhood that they're in, and have your ad at the top, and have your ad say, you know, um, construction company in, you know, Union Junction or um, in the uh, Hillsboro area or whatever, uh, in terms of referring to a neighborhood. And then with that, uh, if they're looking for, you know, of course, construction company in Hillsboro, your ad again just says construction, co construction company Hillsboro. You're not saying in because that is a, a misrepresentation, but Hillsboro and being in the ad just gets it so that your ad's getting noticed right away and clicked on before they have ch uh, a chance to notice and click on anything else. Then your landing page just says, basically you always want, by the way, want your landing page at the top to be what your ad says, to reconfirm that what they clicked on and they saw wasn't a bunch of bullshit. You again say, construction company, Hillsboro, and then you have a form, you don't, make it too complicated so they can just hurry up and fill out the form because the longer they're on the site researching, the more of a chance they may realize that this isn't the company that they got referred to and wanted to initially contact anymore. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole strategy. If you're a uh, company that can deal nationwide, uh, you're talking about a lot of leads. You, instead of getting for uh, somebody who typically would, you know, on a localized basis, getting one to 10 leads a month, you can actually get 10 to 100 leads a month this way. If you had, you know, 300 competitors nationwide, uh, technically, and you did this, and you had every variant of every one of these location-based searches for every single competitor, and your ads at the top, and it's the most clickable thing on Google res search results every single time, and you have a 20% click-through rate and a 30% conversion rate on your landing page, you're talking about a shitload of leads here now. So. Um, it could be a very, very, very lucrative opportunity for some of you guys who have, uh, you know, where you're dealing with people nationwide and you have quite a few competitors on a localized basis. Hey, an extra five or 10 leads a month and basically paying nothing for the leads. Um, it might be another, you know, 10 grand a year in revenue for you, basically, where uh, that 10 grand in revenue has twice the margins. You're making double the profit margin on it, that kind of thing. Because, of course, you don't have the marketing cost anymore. So without the marketing cost or damn little marketing cost because you're getting the lead for two, three, four, five dollars each. And um, that makes all the difference in the margin. So anyway, I'll wrap it up with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you uh, get, uh, are able and do you actually use it. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up slash liking it and consider subscribing as we have a ton of videos on this channel about other PPC money making strategies where I give you the working strategies we have at our PPC agency for your own use, as well as give you information about what doesn't work out in, in, in the current times of what we're currently testing. We make sure you can stay away from stuff that doesn't work as well that way. Uh, if you want to see also some more information, I'll be at to be able to make more money with PPC, you can go to our blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog, where I have step-by-step -step information on how to build PPC campaigns, just like I was talking to you here on this video about, and um, which we have to guarantee results for our clients at our firm, so you can see how we're doing things to guarantee results for our clients there and go into detail, whereas on this channel, it's more high-level stuff. So, And that's all authored by myself, so if you're looking for more supplemental information to help you make more money with your PPC, you can also find it there. If you have any questions about anything I covered today, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel, usually within a couple days time. Uh, as a final note, I want to uh, let you know about a brand new program that we have where we're offering turnkey PPC campaigns to the, the public in general now, where if you're trying to start up a new business and want a PPC campaign that's already going for that market, you can come to us and we probably got a client in that market or have had it in the past 
and you can have the exact same campaign that they were running that generated millions of dollars in sales a year at a certain profit margin, which you can see our numbers that we got on those campaigns, and use the exact same campaign they had, same landing page they had, to get the same virtual results that they had as well. So, and that can be done um, simply because in one local market, somebody is not gonna be competing with you in another local market, therefore there's no conflict of interest. For the national companies, there's certain companies that tried one uh, particular strategy to sell some products, let's say, and they found a better PPC strategy so they don't use uh, the initial strategy that they had you know, anymore. And with that, that strategy is just open for somebody else to use it. Uh, you can source those products elsewhere um, you know, basically, and uh, with that is, is a way for you to be able to have a turnkey business essentially. So if you're interested in that type of thing, uh, you can actually contact our firm and we'll go over the different you know, niches and stuff that we have available for you and uh, what we can do for you in terms of price and so forth. So with that said, I'll wrap it up with that for real this time um, and uh, let you get back to what you're doing. Ultimately, I hope to see you on my next video where we have another great strategy for you on there in a couple days time. See you later.